Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another installment of the mini series. And in this video, I'm going to be removing the front bumper slash front clips slash radiator core support on my R56 Mini. R56 Minis ran from, I believe, 2006 to 2013. However, I also believe that the information contained in this video will cover many Minis, if I'm allowed to say that. I'm doing this to gain better access to the front of the engine. I have some oil leaks there, which I hope to address. I also plan on removing the engine and transmission for some other work that I'll be doing. All of this will be covered in other videos. When they're available, I'll link them down in the description for you. I will say that I am not a mini expert. However, I have taken many things apart in my day and I'm sure we'll be able to muddle through. That said, let's get started with the action that is already in progress. You want to work outwards in, start removing like the headlights and this front grill piece and all that stuff and just start taking things off until I've got the front exposed here. I'm going to leave the air conditioning charged up. I'm not going to discharge that and I'm just going to take the condenser and the AC compressor and lay those both out of the way. We'll cross those bridges when we get there, but that's the plan for now is uh, just to disconnect stuff. I'm going to hand it to him. That was the O2 sensor there. I'm going to hand it to these Germans, man. They nailed it with the electrical connectors. Ah, oh, that's nice too. Looks like there's just one fastener holding that on. Back here. T20, I believe. I win. All right, let's continue on with our plan of removing the front end here, starting with headlights. It looks like these guys are shimmed up pretty good and it looks like they're held down by tens. Sure, there's an electrical connection somewhere. And if it's German, I expect it to disconnect easily. And it did. Yay, that one came out. And that one. And that one. Yay. Now for the awesome German electrical connector. Fantastic. Let's see what's behind here. Looks like there were more of these, <laughs> but my predecessor didn't care as much as I do. All right, that wasn't all that hard, and if you wondered, what I was doing was coming in here and just giving these a little squeeze so that they uh, came loose. Next, I'm going to try to remove this support. There are some things that are attached to it. I'm not sure how it's attached in the front here. I don't see any fasteners going through this way. Well, I don't know. So I'm just gonna start removing some fasteners. <laughs> just to see what kind of effect it has on this whole thing. Those were 10s, these are 13s. Yeah, I was thinking those were just holding latches on with these cables. I was right about that, and I was hoping I could just take this whole assembly and just 
put it up there. How does this work? Yes. All right. These are seven millimeter. Looks like an extension for the AC. All right, let's drain some fluids. These are 17 millimeter bolts, not studs with nuts. And that's one thing I, I don't like that about German cars, but it is what it is. Uh, thank you for not falling on my head. Those are light. Nice. Whoa! You saw my battleship. That broke my tool. My extender, because the only thing fit in there was my thin wall 17. And I just broke that off in there. Good thing I have another one, but my last one. Somebody's being a full-on D-bag here. Please understand that is full-on 120 something PSI. That Ingersoll, I've had it forever and there hasn't been much it hasn't broken loose. This is my, I'm really serious now, like two foot breaker bar. No, I really, I really mean it. The parking brake is on, but ineffective. Stay. Okay. It feels like there was movement. Yeah, so the I'm serious now breaker bar. I also lost that little extension. I have this other 17 millimeter socket that's half inch that I use, this thin wall that got in there. Let's try this again, shall we? The I'm serious breaker bar. Yeah, that's the ticket. Or should I call it, I'm really serious now. <laughs> I'm really, really serious now. I'm not gonna take any more of your guff. No more of your chicanery. Your shenanigans. Oh, gonna need to remove this inner fender liner here. Looks like some plastic clips in here. A couple there, one there, some in there. And then there's like a little bolt up in there. So there's a few fasteners that hold it on here. And one hidden one right there. For these, it's like a screw inside of a plastic mount. I just take my pocket screwdriver, unscrew the center. Once you've got it out far enough, or you just pull the center out, you can go in and just pop the rest of the clip out. If they give you trouble, hit them a little WD-40. The rest look like T-30s, yeah. This one under here is 10. Looks like there was one that held it up underneath this front bumper, but it's gone missing. One more right here. Another one hiding up here. Careful study has revealed what we're looking at. There's this marker light that gets unplugged because I'm trying to figure out how to remove this piece and doing what I just did gave me everything I needed. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that attached, but I'm gonna go in with my pliers and pinch each one of these. There's also another clip that you need to undo here. There's more of these. 
all the way up inside this wheel well. So it's there and there and there. So it's just clipped in. So I'm going to reach in, I'm going to unclip it. Here's a detail on those clips. Some are missing, as you can see. Try not to break them because parts for this are expensive. But this is the fastener I was trying to get to. I know somebody's been in here before. They jacked it all up, but whatever. Need to be clever about it. And oh, remember when I said I'd hit these with some penetrating oil? Sooner or later, this thing's gonna have to come out. It looks like there's only one fastener remaining. Uh, there's the sensor that's here, and then the motor that's here as far as electrical connections go. And I'm going to disconnect this lighting also so I can just take this whole harness and move it out of the way. I sincerely hope that when I remove this that it doesn't all come leaking out, but I'm going to go get a vacuum uh, end so I can throw it on here and close it off so it's not an issue. That can just be unclipped, and so can that. Uh, gonna need two hands. I have this assortment of vacuum ends, but yeah, there's these little plugs. I don't like getting crap all over my floor if I can help it, so I got a pan under here. It looks like this is a check valve. And if it is, fantastic. If it's not, well, it is a check valve. I'm still putting that on there, but yay. Score one for the Germans. At one time, this was held on by two fasteners, I'm certain. But now there's only one left. And maybe T20? Yup, T20. Oh, and it helps if you screw it all the way in. I guess that one's gotta come off too, eh? Yeah, I had a feeling you were going there. Here's another thing it's setting in here that doesn't look completely attached. So it's been flopping around in here for some time, but it won't go up high enough to clear. I'm just gonna leave that loose for now. Let's move on to the other side. Same thing's happening over here. These clips don't work, just knock the centers of them out. And of course, you will have to replace them. the AC compressor connector. Push forward. What I'm doing with these clips on the inside since they're splayed out like that is I just come in with my pliers and just pinch them down and allow them to push through. Otherwise, could be that guy. See more clips under the front bumper. Just for good measure, these seem to be giving me the most trouble today. Huh. Looks like they gave the past person trouble too. Uh, but the idea is I wanna see if I can get that whole plastic piece off the front there. I've been looking for a radiator drain and I haven't found one yet. And these pipes are for the intercooler, in fact, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna disconnect these, both of these right now. Uh, there's another one over here, so there's an inlet and an outlet. Get both of those disconnected so that, uh, remember that this one belongs to that pipe that goes up over the top of stuff over there that I'd love to get rid of. Uh, but I think after I remove the front bumper skin, the drain for the radiator might be under that. So I'll disconnect this one up here and this one down here. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to cut these zip ties too.
here's what I'm seeing. One here, one here, one here, and one there. And the magic number is T25. T25. Bingo! Hmm, that was easy. I think that's that T25 again. And just take the intercooler out. There we are. So, disconnect the hoses before removing the intercooler. And now these. They look like they're 15. These are 13s, not 15s. There's a bonus screw right here, T20. Yeah, it's all attached down there. Oh yeah, there's the other one. That guy's out. Now removing these two, they're 16 millimeter. This all comes out as one piece. It's looking like I can have my condenser by removing these fasteners that seem to be retaining it. Because we don't want to open up the AC system if we can avoid it. I'm going to undo these clips and move this out of the way. And the magic number is T20. T20. Does anybody have T20? There's a fastener here, but this one was loose. So it was, uh, it felt like it just should just pop out, but there's a 10 millimeter fastener right here that needs to be removed. It goes through that uh, side there. Removing the lower radiator hose is going to be my method, but there's this cooler piping, cold side piping, that I'm going to want to remove to get to it because it's actually down there under it. You might be able to sort of see it, but first, Let's remove this fastener attaching this to the fan shroud. And then there's this giant clip back here. You might be able to see right there that I'm gonna unclip. I'm gonna pull that out with a screwdriver. I just put my screwdriver into this and pulled it free. There. Now we can more easily get to that lower radiator hose and drain it out. Got it low to the ground right above my pan. I'm going to use my super special Astro clamp tool. Well, as my hero Ed China would say, that worked a treat. So here's the detail on what went down with that lower hose. This little grabby part here is what's controlled when you squeeze it. So I just went down across the clamp like so. Grab one side, grab the other side and then squeeze and that makes it work. I believe the only thing that's holding this whole front plastic piece on here at this time, uh, the radiator's been disconnected to some degree. Uh, there's there's a upper radiator hose right down there under the expansion tank. And then I think it's just these uh, 10 millimeters here and also here that are holding it. But I think once that's removed uh, and also the expansion tank, at least this upper hose here. With those removed, I believe I can take this whole radiator slash front 
bezel slash assembly out. Oh yeah, there's likely electrical connections going to the radiator fan also that would need to be disconnected. Here's a giant electrical connector. New discovery. So it looks like that that's the lower radiator hose there. So it looks like you can disconnect both hoses here and just remove the whole assembly. So that's an alternative to what I did. I just like disconnecting it at its lowest point so that I can get it to drain out. Well, I think the time has come. Let's see if we can get this off of here. There's a lot of complaining, Mr. 10 millimeter. Oh. I don't really see anything else that appears to be attached. That goes out of there. That gives us tons of access. You know, if I were gonna have to work on the front of this car or the front of this engine, I'd just do this. To me, it seems like it's the quickest way. I think you'll avoid a lot of busted knuckles, a lot of BS just by doing this. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Well, it was for me, except for the part where that wheel wouldn't come off. But I did say at the beginning of the video that I'm not a mini expert, but I did learn a few things during the process of removal. In fact, one of those things was I, I have wondered if you would be able to remove that entire assembly with that, that upper support in place and not have to disconnect the hood latches or any of that kind of thing. However, I couldn't think around how I would keep the condenser intact. In other words, not opening the AC system and having to recharge it. That would be kind of a bummer. But this is part of a larger series of videos that I'm doing on this Mini. I will be covering uh, removal of the engine transmission, uh, the clutch, the timing chain, fixing those oil leaks, and a few other things as those videos become available. Link down in the description. Additionally, I will link tools and other information that could help you with this repair and other repairs on your Mini. And lastly, if you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you to head over to ericthecarguy.com. But one more thing before I let you go, I want to give a special shout out to my patrons who are helping make the mini series possible. Thanks guys, you are totally awesome. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time.